Hello there, Mavericks. This is Rob Reinhold. It is March 23rd, and we are one day after the Fed meeting, where we got a Fed meeting yesterday, a little bit of volatility, then Fed Chairman Powell came out and basically tanked the market. Now, this morning, we actually had a rally back up, and so we had a pretty good open. We opened up, the NASDAQ opened up about 1%, and at one point, the NASDAQ was up over 2%. The S&P was up 1.5%. And you can see here by the end of the day, it had given it all back. So the Dow barely positive, S&P barely positive, NASDAQ still holding on to a 1% gain. Look at the Russell 2000. It got crushed yesterday and it even got crushed again today. And it was an up market. Oil down, but gold has continued to do really well. Gold looks poised to actually break out to some new highs here. If we take a look at the market internals, you can see that the market was still a little bit more gainers and losers. But take a look at how many stocks are still under their 50-day moving average. We still have three quarters of the market under the 50-day moving average. That is not a real healthy market. So let's jump into these charts because the charts are going to give us some indication of what's going on. Here we have the S&P. You can see the S&P since February. We topped out. We've come down. We rallied, fell to a new low. We've rallied up. And this looks like the top of this next rally to where it looks like we are going to be going down to some lower levels. So the S&P looks pretty clear, but here's the problem. Take a look at the Qs. The NASDAQ is saying, hey, we are on the verge of a breakout. Typically, the S&P and the NASDAQ are pretty highly correlated. I think they're correlated around 78%. We are seeing a real uncorrelation to these two markets. So the NASDAQ says, I want to break out higher. So the question is, which one is going to happen? Now, theoretically... The NASDAQ could break higher while the S&P broke lower. That could happen theoretically, but that does not happen very often. So whatever one happens is likely to pull the other one in this direction. So let's say that the Qs are able to break out and run higher. Then that means I think the S&P gets pulled up and we get above our moving averages into some more bullish territory. However, let's say that the S&P tanks. I think what that means is the NASDAQ is going to get dragged down and likely that is going to be some resistance. Which one is likely to happen? I don't know. You don't know either. So we will just have to wait and see. But it is clear that we want to be long the strong, short the weak. And the question is, where's the strength? We've been talking about where the strength has been. It has been in communication services and technology. And you can see that's solid green there. There's nothing but green in this area. Where's the weakness been? Well, we've talked about weakness in financials, weakness in healthcare. We've talked about weakness in the energy sector and real estate. It's all right there. So as long as we're allocated to the right sectors, we can be long some, short the other, and still have some really nice gains. So let's go ahead and update our score on the markets. We have to go with the S&P at a negative one. The NASDAQ is at like a plus 1.5. So nothing is telling us to be really bullish or really bearish yet. But if we take a look at the S&P score, as you can see, we are below the 20 MA. We're at the 50 MA and the slope is basically flat. So we're at a negative one on our market outlook. If we get another red candle tomorrow, so let's say we get another big red fat candle tomorrow, then this is going to have to drop to a negative two. And then I think you want to get more bearish the S&P stocks for sure, and it probably pulls the NASDAQ down. So let's take a look at a couple potential trades. This is a great market for traders that know how to go long and short because there's some things that are really strong. Take a look at GE. GE has completely ignored any sort of selling in the market. We had this run up. We had this high base ascending triangle pattern. We broke out. Now remember, we were in this trade a couple of weeks ago. We got out at our max gain. At this point, it's bulletproof. This stock is not coming down whatsoever. Now look, I don't know if it's going to stay in this base, break out, but this is where we can make a great trade using a diagonal call spread. So we could go out and do something like the 8892 because that's where resistance is. We could do the 8892 diagonal call spread for a very short period of time. If it stays in the base, we make a little money. If it breaks out, okay, we don't make as much money. 
The only thing we don't want is a big fall. And we're going to be protecting ourselves with some risk management stuff if that happens. My guess is 89 is the break-even point on this trade. So as you can see, if it stays in this base, it's going to be a nice trade. You'll make a little bit of money. If it takes off, you'll make a little bit of money. These are the kind of trades you want to make on these kind of bullish stocks. You can also be making some good money on sideways stocks here. So here's one that's going sideways. We got moving averages, literally just flip-flopping back and forth. Now this is in the technology sector. This is Snowflake. They are a software company. Whenever you're looking to do a sideways trade, you have to pick your midpoint. And what I mean by that is that you're going to take a look out. I'm going to just look out to next Friday. So that's going to be March 31st. And I'm going to say, okay, where do I think the stock is likely to be? Now, right now, technology is outperforming, but the S&P is underperforming. So if I was more bearish, I would pick like 130. And I'd say, okay, I'm going to do a 120, 130, 140 butterfly. I mean, I think it's going to stay in this area. If I was more bullish, I might do a 140, 150, 160 butterfly. Here's the thing. I'm neither. So I'm going to be looking at doing right in the center, a 130, 140, 150 call or put butterfly right in the middle. So there's lots of good sideways stuff out there at the moment as well. But I do have to say there's definitely better shorts out there than everything else. This is Corteva. This is in the material sector. It's a chemical company. And you can see here, we've got this bear rally right up to support. We hit our head. These are nasty candles on the downside. 56 is going to be short-term support. So if you're looking to be short-term on this trade, I think 56 is where you take it. But if you're willing to give this thing some more time, I think we easily see new lows. And that's going to be probably around 54. 54 is going to be that target here if you're willing to give this a couple weeks. So basically going out to the April monthly options plays. Another good looking short, here is Sally May. And we like to call these the kiss of death or the march of death. And you can see here, something happened very bad here. I don't care what it was. We had a little rally and you can see it has never recovered from that. This is the march of death. So whenever you see marches of death, you want to get short any rallies and you want to sell any breakdowns of low bases. And that's just what we got today. I'm not going to be super aggressive on this. I'm just going to do an 11-12 bear call spread on it. That's going to be a pretty wimpy play because look, this thing is definitely having some bad news. If it keeps dropping further, I just want my profit. If it bounces up, I want to be able to sit through some volatility because that's what these Stocks do on their march of death. They go down and down and down and down. And then one day they're going to rip 20% higher. But within a couple of weeks, they're right back down or lower than when that rip happened. So you want to make sure you're playing these in a method where you can sit through those rips. So a, a vertical spread, bear call spread, bear put spread is a great way to do it. Give yourself enough time. You're just saying, I think this thing's going to be substantially lower or just lower than it is within the, within the next couple of weeks. Let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow, we got a Friday. I think tomorrow is the day. We've been talking about how one or the other is going to break. We had the queues try to break out twice, tried to break out yesterday, tried to break out today, and they got sucked back down. The question is, do we get that breakout tomorrow? I actually don't know. I literally am at a point where I would flip a coin and I think it would be a better decision than what I would come up with in my mind. Whenever I'm at a point where I have to say that, where I think flipping a coin is better than my opinion, I wait. I wait until the coin lands and then I say, oh, it's tails. So it looks like we need to be short. Or it's heads. Oh, okay. I think we can get a little bit more bullish here. I think you wait. I think you absolutely wait here to see what Friday brings. If Friday is a red candle, then I think you want to be definitely net short going into next week. If Friday is an up candle, I think you want to be neutral. I'm still not super, super excited to be overly bullish. Other than the NASDAQ and technology stocks, everything looks pretty nasty. Economic reports tomorrow, we do get durable goods orders. Don't even worry about that. The market has not cared about that report for a long time. And we are heading into our first quarter earnings here uh, shortly next month. So no earnings on the schedule. Thank you for joining me. Everyone have a great day. Goodbye.